Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to start rendering something to the page. We could manually create the elements we need to display the data we've got so far, but that would kind of suck and would be time consuming and a bit laborious. Why would we do that when we can use knockouts bindings instead? There are a whole range of different bindings that we can use to enable certain functionality in our user interface. There are bindings that control elements visibility, their text or HTML content, and even their attributes. In addition to these basic bindings, there are also specialized form-specific bindings for working with form controls and the events that they dispatch following interaction with users. We can even create our own custom bindings in order to manipulate the UI in any way that's required when the data in the view model changes. There are also some control bindings that we can use to control our program's execution. We can use the if binding to control whether an element exists in the DOM or not, and it's opposing convenience binding if not, and also the for each and with bindings to add a section of markup for each item in an array or change the binding context respectively. The binding context is the object in the view model from which the data used in the binding is taken. Knockout will largely manage the binding context for us, but the ability to manipulate it allows us to create sophisticated user interfaces that work with different parts of the view model independently. Lastly, there is also the template binding that we can use to work with a third-party templating solution if we wish. We'll look at some of these different bindings in more detail later on. For now, let's focus on displaying some data. So far, we've got the title of the photo set and the description, and they're ready and waiting in our view model. So let's display these. We can add some markup for them in the HTML page. So the outer container for all of the markup required by our application will be an article and we give it the ID photo app. So first of all, we want to add a header in which to display the title and the description. So we've used a custom data attribute here and the attribute we've used is data bind. So this is how bindings are added when using knockout, and we can add them to any HTML elements. We can add more than one binding if we wish. In this case, we've used the text binding. What the text binding does is to set the text content of the HTML element it's applied to, and it sets the text content using one of our view model's properties. Our view model has a property called title, which we set in the last lesson, and that's what we're gonna display in this element here. We can also display the description. And we can use the text binding for that as well. So bindings are applied using the HTML5 custom data attributes. And in this case, we're using the text binding and linking to the title and desk properties of our view model. Before these elements will display the text from our view model, we need to apply the bindings. So we can do this at the end of our apps init function. So let's just go back to our script file and we want to do this right at the end of the initialization. And knockout has a special method for applying bindings and the method is called apply bindings. And this method will need to take the view model that the bindings are for. So when we run the page now, two HTML elements should show the text that's been returned by Flickr. So let's test that out. There we go. So these elements have their text content set once the Ajax request has returned the data and it's been added to the observable view model properties. It doesn't matter that the apply bindings method will be invoked before the Ajax request returns the data. As soon as the data is returned and added to the view model, the text of the elements will be updated. If we had a lot of styling applied to the H1 or the P elements that we've used, it might look a little weird for them to be empty while the initial Ajax request is in progress. So we can add another binding that makes sure these elements are not even in the DOM until the view model properties have been set. So to do this, we can use the if binding. Generally, this binding should be applied to a container element. So we can add it to the header. So we use the data bind attribute once again. We'll be using this frequently throughout the course. And the binding that we want to use is if, and we just say, if title and desk. So now when we first load the page, the elements in the header will not be present until the data has been returned and processed. 
So let's see if we can put a breakpoint somewhere in our app. So we'll. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Ah, that's unusual. Okay, never mind. So let's just look at the HTML content. So we can see that these elements currently exist. Let's just refresh the page and then they shouldn't exist until the Ajax request actually returns. So it happens pretty quickly. And that's why I wanted to set a breakpoint so that we could uh, try and control that. It's unusual that it's not actually working. Let's, uh, let's just manually comment this out for now. And when we refresh this time, see the header element is now empty and that will stay empty until the request returns, which will be forever at this point because we've commented it out. So in this lesson, we looked at some simple knockout bindings that we can use to connect different parts of the user interface to different properties of our view model. Specifically, we looked at the text and if bindings and saw how to add them using the HTML5 custom data attribute. In the next lesson, we can look at observable arrays. Thanks for watching.